Welcome to Myrtle's Rant. Um, as I sit here preparing to think about what I'm going to say to you live and unscripted from the Hotbox studio, I am a little bit tired. Uh, we, I spent the last week in Abuja in Nigeria, came back to an event here at the Jazz Farm. Um, of course, to, tomorrow night we have the Amber Cup here at the Jazz Farm, sorry, on Saturday. And, um, and so it's been, it really has been a week. So I decided, as opposed to be ranting about an issue, to share with everybody this evening um, about about my experiences in, in Abuja. It was my first time in Nigeria and my plane took off from our Tambo airport at four o'clock in the morning. So the, the transport came to collect me here at 1.30 in the morning and I arrived in Abuja um, at uh, half past six in the evening. I had flown from Johannesburg to Lagos, not got off the plane, and then flown from Lagos out of Nigeria again to Lome in Togo. There I waited for five hours and then I got a connecting flight from Lome to Abuja, which is the capital of Nigeria. It was very interesting uh, landing in a completely new country, um, negotiating all of the customs and the formalities, and then of course arriving at the hotel and meeting um, my amazing panel. And I'd like to just, first of all, thank uh, the University of Cape Town, uh, Criminology Department, uh, the University of Bristol, and their Cannabis Africana project. And that is the banner that we all met in, in Nigeria under. And our, luckily our panel was on the Wednesday morning um, at 11 o'clock. So everybody was still nice and fresh. There was about 60 people at the conference, maybe 80, I'm not sure. But the conference was the 14th bian biennial international conference on drugs and alcohol and society in Africa. Towards the reform of drugs, law and policy in Africa, research, practice and ad advocacy advocacy considerations. So that is the title because I wouldn't have been able to say that if I didn't read it. Um, when I arrived, I certainly uh, saw quite a few uh, familiar faces. Uh, Clements was there uh, from Zimbabwe. He now lives in the UK and he is um, a, a, a PhD uh, graduate specializing in land and agrarian matters. And he actually works as a, a research assistant at Bristol University now. But I've known Clemens since Drug Policy Week in 2017 here in South Africa. I also saw Maria Goretti from Ghana who works there for the IDPC. She is a, is a lawyer from Ghana. Um, and and the rest of our panel was was made up of other esteemed people from the rest of Africa. Now, ours was the first plenary session, so that meant that everybody at the conference was in attendance. And the topic of our panel was cannabis policy and its social, political and economic impact in the different African countries. And our panel was made up of Professor Jalal Tofik. Uh, he actually just sent comments because he wasn't well. He's from Morocco, so wasn't there in person. Then, uh, of course, Dr. Clemens Rusenga from the University of Bristol, ex Zimbabwe, who is a longtime friend. And then Edioma Ubong Nelson. Um, uh, Edioma was also at Drug Policy Week in, in Cape Town in 2017, and he was representing Krisa in Nigeria. He is Nigerian. Myself and Maria Goretti Loglo, who's from the IDPC in Ghana. And we really did have an incredibly fr a fruitful panel. We each had 30, about 30 minutes um, to speak on our given topic and my topic was the journey of, uh, towards cannabis le legalization in South Africa but more importantly cannabis as a harm reduction mechanism. There was lots of speak of harm reduction at the conference and it really was, I'm not going to go into too much detail, I am going to write a blog about my, my thoughts and experiences but the overarching um, uh, feeling at the conference was a movement very strongly towards harm reduction. Yes, there were prohibitionists in the room, 
Um, you know, we've always said that religious people, particularly Christian people, and um, and the rehabs were those people who would always be the diehard prohibitionists. And it certainly was a facilitator, um, a service provider, as they call them in drug policy circles, from a rehab center in Nigeria who stood up and said that our harm reduction measures are um, basically uh, telling all the addicts it's okay uh, and we're condoning bad behavior. So that I think was, um, it did stick out for me because as Paul Michael, the head of our legal team said to us very, very early on, there will always be those percentages of people who are prohibitionists. But even through long, boring scientific pro, uh, presentations that were presented in somebody's seventh language and difficult to decipher, there was a, a real feeling of moving towards something that is more human rights based. That was the overall feeling that I did get at the conference. And of course, um, the cherry on the top of the whole Creaser conference in Nigeria was that my dear friend Ethan Nadelman, Dr. Ethan Nadelman from uh, ex retired ex Drug Policy Alliance in the USA, uh, expert consultant to the trial of the plant, drug policy wa warrior and veteran, was there in person in Nigeria. And this created the most incredible dynamic. Um, you know, coming from South Africa, we always see things along racial lines. I, I was most certainly the only white woman in the room. And then um, uh, uh, Ethan and Dr. Gernot Klanschnik from uh, University of Bristol were the other, the white males in the room. And we were watching the dynamic and we were watching um, the, the way the different presentations were delivered and the confidence with which the anti-prohibitionist stance was delivered. And certainly there were groups like Youth Rise Nigeria, uh, our panel, uh, various other scientific panels that just had a different feeling about them. And you could see the people who had got it. Aha, harm reduction, that's what it's all about. Everything from trying to fix some of society's ills all the way through to methadone and needle exchange programs. Harm reduction has to be at the at the cornerstone of ensuring a move towards our human rights. I mean, I think it'll be a long time before we actually break through until all um, all uh, drug um, policies all the way around the world are human rights based. But I was proud of Africa. I really was. I was proud of of um, the incredible cal caliber of all of the delegates and the fact that everybody seemed to really be getting something out of this conference. Um, there certainly have been conferences in the past and uh, that I felt like, well, oh, okay, now we're all going home and that didn't change anything. Um, but this certainly got a conversation going. And... Um, Ethan is certainly the one of the most dynamic speakers I've ever listened to. He stirred up the room um, and he gave the complete opposite side um, of the argument to uh, the, the delegate from the, the service provider. So in the middle was all of this really interesting conversation going around. So once again, thank you to my sponsors and thank you to the universities for continuing to support the work that we do here at Fields of Green for All. It certainly was an honor. It was crazy to fly all the way there and fly all the way back in four days, but we did it and it was certainly worth the while. And uh, that's Myrtle's rant for this time. See you next time. Bye.